very foreign yet. Going live with Space Engine. Um, game is loading. Continuing to go through the tutorials. Space Engine is early access and it is a universe simulator. I went back to August 1999, recreated the Eclipse, the tutorial to camera. Did you notice the thin lines near Jupiter's crescent? In the last session I was looking at uh, time control. Just look at lunar, uh, the total eclipse, solar eclipse. So to, moving on with this tutorial will teach you the advanced camera options, photographic modes and zoom. Is the V key. Or These are its very faint dusty rings that are only visible under certain lighting conditions. You may make them more visible by switching Space Engine to the realistic photographic mode. Celestial objects <coughs> with physically accurate brightness and attempts to adjust it on the camera to a bar as exposure one. Space engine will reduce exposure to prevent the frame from being overexposed. Look down to see Europa's. This is the auto exposure mode. However, if you look at a brightly illuminated surface such as a brightly lit terrain, Clearly, but you, you can't see any stars simultaneously. Just like in real life, notice the value of the door exposure time measured in seconds. You may adjust the exposure. Exposure compensation at minus two. And the compensation, press and hold. D -d -d keys, or use the buttons below. The exposure compensation is applied on top of the automatic value computed by Space Engine. Its units are equivalent to stops in photography, i.e. changing the exposure time twice. You can also type the desired value of the exposure compensation by clicking its indicator on the camera toolbar. Enter, for example. Oh, that's the wrong key. A Space Engine... Slash key and this icon reset the exposure compensation back to zero. Shift. Notice exposure Jupiter reveals its night side. 
faintly illuminated by its moons. You can look closely by leader, you're on the camera toolbar. It displays your current field of view. Continue changing it until you reach the use of the camera zoom. Hold the shift key and the left mouse button and then slowly drag the mouse vertically or away from you. The value of roughly 20. You may also do this using the keyboard. Or you can click the FOV indicator. Type the value and press enter. Aurora near its poles. Notice what you also can see. At this zoom level you can see thin ring of Jupiter's atmosphere. And this is because zoom works like a telescope not only approaching objects but also makes fainter stars visible. This is displayed on the camera toolbar as the mag limit. You can adjust the magnet or you can click on it, set them by pressing the keys or using buttons below magnitude value on the toolbar. Thus more stars will appear on the screen. The default value of 7 roughly corresponds to the magnitude of the dimmest stars visible. Right, notice how you can see more stars in space. However, while observing from Earth's surface, it is reduced to 6 to 10. The stellar magnitude is a reverse quantity, so larger limiting value means that you can see fainter star absorption in the atmosphere. Note that if you enter a value that is too large, this may result in significant load on your computer, because Space Engine will generate and render millions of stars. To reset the magnitude limit back to its default value, click this button on the toolbar. To reset camera zoom level back to the default value of 45 degrees, press the middle mouse button, or you click that. Perfect. The auto photographic mode is also great to explore very bright objects such as the sun's surface. Let's go to the sun. Right. Sun. Where's the sun? That's one of Jupiter's moons. Ah, there's the sun. <laughs> Perfect mode, or commonly known as HDR mode. In this mode, Space Engine uses fake pro You can see the sunspots and fine details on the sun surface. They are for different objects to give the scene a more artistic view. Press the V key or the photo mode button on the camera toolbar twice until it changes to HDR. Notice how you can see the sun surface, Corona. Among many other extremely bright objects are accretion disks around black holes. One such disk can be found around SS43. Locations. Can you see in HDR mode? This is impossible in real life, but aesthetically more pleasing. Find it in the locations or don't save dialogue. Press the F6 key or this icon on the menu. This is the locations dialogue. Here you can see a list of interesting default locations and all your own saves. You may go to a selected location or add your current dialogue. SS433. Have a look at what's ah SS four three three position using the corresponding buttons. Scroll the window with the mouse wheel and click the location named Still featured locations. So, and then there's mine. Stellar nursery terror with life in LMC. Night in the Pleiades. Volcano in the haze. Icy news. In a sextuple star system. Mars, Mars, the rubber ducky comet, Io, the 
Europa. Saturn, the dual in our solar system, break five and count twice. Proxima B, the closest X exit rings. Pluto. Kepler 452B. Land planet. So let's go to this one. Click the go to button. Note that the photo world has been switched to auto unbelievably hot gas falling into the black hole. Note how the accretion disk looks bent around the black hole. This is the gravity lensing, the effect of light deflection again. Each location has its own mode, whichever is the most suitable for it. For this location, the auto mode is the best to allow dragging the mouse until you reach a distance of 20,000 kilometers. Here you can see jets of hot plasma being ejected from the inner parts of the accretion disk. space near the event horizon. Move backward by holding the right as well as the black hole's stellar companion in the background. Notice how the outer parts of the disc look darker. You may change the exposure to see them better. Switch to the manual photo mode by pressing the B key or the photo mode. You have full control of the exposure, however, it still renders objects with a physically accurate brightness. In, in this mode, Space Engine does not adjust exposure automatically, even look entirely black in some cases. This is because they are much cooler than the hot central parts. Increase the exposure compensation to roughly minus 25 until you can see orange on the outer parts of the accretion disk. Press this button. Increase exposure compensation. The outer parts of the disc have a temperature of around three to four thousand Kelvin, so relatively chilling temperature compared to the 50,000 kelvins that the inner parts can reach. Thus they emit much less light and light. The sunspots appear black because of this exact reason. Therefore results in an orangish colour. This also is why they look black at You may explore or take a screenshot to do this. Click this icon on the camera toolbar. After Space Engine saves the other black hole system by flying around and adjust exposure, and finally take a photograph of the photo of system. Uh -huh. Perfect. You may save this location for future use or share it with friends. Open the locations dialog again by pressing the F6 key. 
more. That. To add the current location, click the add button, then choose this location. Enter a name for your location if you want and press enter. Notice what the location was added to my locations tab and will save with the current photo mode and exposure compensation guide. include copying the code of the location to the clipboard. You may later paste it to the web forum or messenger. To import shared locations, copy the code from website or messenger, click the add button on the locations dialog and choose paste URL from clipboard. You may share the selected location by clicking the share button. Currently available. Let's load some other location. For example, let's go to Pluto. Scroll up and select the location and Pluto New Horizons departure. Go to. Note that the photo mode was changed to HDR because this location was saved in that mode. Zoom until you get the FOV to one degree. This is the point from which the New Horizon spacecraft took the famous Pluto Crescent image. The FOV button and enter button. Congratulations. Hold shift and left mouse button. Drag the mouse. You now know how to use the advanced camera options. The next lesson will teach you a great exploration tool, the Space Engine the Universe map. Universe map. This tutorial will teach you how to use the first Space Engine's exploration tool, the Universe map. The Universe map is a useful tool to explore your neighbourhood. Open them and the map is centred on the currently selected object, Jupiter. It shows its map by pressing F1 or the M key, or that icon. As a certain radius. You can change that radius by using the mouse wheel or by using the zoom slider on the right panel. Try to zoom in close to Jupiter. So you can also, uh, good. We can see Jupiter's rings and the orbits of its inner moons. Take the map to the zoom by left plus right drag, as you do with a normal zoom in to an object. This is a more precise method of zooming. Zoom out to the radius of 10, 12 AU to see the main asteroid belt. Uh, left plus right drag. Asteroids are shown as grey points. Now centre the map of the sun by double clicking on it. You can control the time flow in the map as like in the normal mode. Speed up the time flow to 10 times. 
Notice a large group of asteroids with bright dots near Jupiter's orbit, which are moving at the same speed as of planets and asteroids. Those are Jupiter's Trojans, blue dots and comets. Jupiter. Ah, oh, yes, these. Explore the entire universe with the map. Zoom out to see the neighboring stars to a radius of approximately 10. You may explore. So, we're zooming out. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. No point. Keep zooming in. Three light years, 0 0.04, 0.05. One light year, two light years, three. Ah, there's Proxima Centauri, Bernard's star. The grid runs parallel to the... Tilt the map with the Q&E keys and the bright drag to make of our Milky Way galaxy. Stars are highlighted with circles and lines. The colour of the circles indicates the colour temperature of the main star in the star system, except the pink ones. They highlight the dark invisible systems, black holes and wandering planets, called planetars. Click any star to select. And burn it in the sun. Open the solar system browser to view its planets. Note that the object's info table now displays the distance to that star. The map scrolls and zooms itself to the selected distance browser and press the centre button on the right toolbar. This button. Select some star or planet in the solar system. Now close the map. Planet star B. Notice that you are still near Jupiter. The universe map does not change your position in space and time, but the object you had explored in the map is still selected. Explore it in the map by zooming in orbit. You can do this in many ways. Using the go to command, do it now. It is in complete darkness as there are no stars close enough to light up the surface. To be able to view surface. Right. Notice that if you went to a, in a completely dark environment, you may turn up ambient lighting. Press the gear icon on the camera toolbar. This opens the camera tab in the settings menu. Use the ambient lighting. to the dark surface. Yeah. Let's return to the map and find the planet B. I was already there. To open the universe map again. Zoom out to the nearby stars level. Well, I don't have to, it's right there. stars here are real. Space Engine features procedural generation of objects in uncharted regions of space. You may distinguish a procedural object by its name. 
It has a form of RS. Whatever. Starts with RS. You may hide them by unchecking the procedural object in the right toolbar. Find the Bernard Star and select it. I was already there. Now center it by C key and zoom in. Zooming in again. Bernard Star Big, now select the planet. Both center and zoom at once by pressing the middle mouse button. To command. Remember, you can press to the planet, close the map, and go to the planet by simply using the go. It's time to explore the galaxy. Select any object in the sky and open the universe map. Show, uh, I think I'll select Nizar. Enable uh, procedure objects back. Continue zooming out until you see a new kind of markers, triangles and diamonds. Select any star cluster, a green diamond mark and go there by pressing G. Notice how the map adjusts itself so you Right, now you know how to f gonna go there. Just using the map. Now find a nebula by the same way a red triangle mark in the universe map and go there. Red triangle. So I'm looking for Using the universe map as a way to find any kind of dim nearby objects, tiny. Go there. Open clusters or dim stars such as brown dwarfs and solitary black holes. And of course, you might near radius. The universe map to explore other galaxies. Enter the map and zoom out to the 3.5 to 4 minutes. Three point five to four million light years.
This is the local group, the small galaxy group that includes the Milky Way. The largest galaxy here is Andromeda. Tier 31 selected. It is lurking in the middle of a cluster near the edge of the map. We've highlighted it with the pink circle. So you want me to select that one? Zoom on the galaxy by pressing the middle mouse button. The Andromeda galaxy is at least twice as large as our Milky Way galaxy and contains nearly one trillion stars. The universe map has a beautiful mode to explore star distribution and galaxies. Click the exploration mode option in the right toolbar. In this mode, all information overlays are hidden, revealing thousands of stars. You may control the amount of stars displayed by using the density slider on the right toolbar. Click and center on any light dot in this galaxy. So the density slider is on 18. Click on any dot. Display by using the density slider on the right toolbar. But yeah, I've already done that. In this mode, all information overlays are hidden, revealing thousands of stars. You may control the image. Zoom out to a radius of 10,000 light years. Ten thousand. This mode is also great to explore the large scale structure of the universe. Zoom out to the radius of several hundreds of millions of light years. You can now see the cosmic grid, the largest structure in our universe. Select any light dot and go to it. Press the G key once and enjoy the intergalactic flight. Okay, so I'm going to pick some random dot here. That one. Right, G. All these points are not stars, they are galaxies. Notice how Space Engine increases their brightness so you can see them. With a naked eye, you could only barely see the closest galaxy, such as Andromeda. Now you are somewhere, well, let's return back to Earth. Ah. Away from home, you may explore any planet in any star system in this galaxy. It's a complete... Press Shift H. Press Shift H again to select our home star. And Shift H again to select our home planet. Planet Earth. The easiest way to find home if you get lost in the space.
go to the earth now. Milky Way. Perfect. Now you know how to use the universe map. The next tutorial will teach you another exploration tool, the solar system chart. interesting program. So that's another couple of tutorials done. And next session I will continue the tutorials. This is Early Access and this is called Space Engine. See you next time.